All right, this week on ResoBiz, we're going to be working on the neck wood, and we're going to be working on um, just checking to see how the wood's doing drying, and then some prepping some other parts like heel blocks and the uh, ring where the cone sits on it, and just different getting preparations all put in order. I'm Burl with Bro Guitars, and welcome to ResoBiz, where everything is greater with a resonator. <laughs> Alright, so for the neck, we had those pieces that we chopped out. We was hoping maybe we'd get enough wood out of them to be able to get the neck. And this is one of those pieces, a lot of junk in it. Um, there's some stuff up in here. And so I, I just cut a little square piece out of that chunk. That There's nothing in that. There's too many bad spots. So that's that's how the picture that's done now we've got this this is a little punchy punky whatever they call that so it's it's got junk in here um, a lot of solid stuff this end will be we could maybe cut that off um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to look for because it's way wider it only needs to be two inches we're at three and this is all to one side so I'm thinking maybe some of this could be used and you say, well, what about this? But if this is my neck, then you see how much that chunk is cut out. So we just need a good solid piece in here. So I'm going to draw a line, cut out on the bandsaw, and see if, if there's enough in here that will look that will that will work. So that's where I'm at right now. All right, there was, I was hoping that we'd be able to get some necks of the leftover wood and that, that scrap bits that I pulled off that you saw in the last video. And uh, yeah, that didn't work. So we're gonna try to get, ew, it don't look too good. I'm hoping we'll get some wood. I just need two or three, about three or four inch, one inch boards. So if we get three one inch slabs, will be good as long as they're three inches wide. So let's see what we can do. Can you hear that? This is and it's thick. This is just a piece of scrap that off the top of the log that we cut last time. But I thought I'd better explain a little bit my thinking or why I wanted to use black locust. It wasn't just a random log I found out in the woods that I thought, oh let's try it. Um, when I got this mill I don't know how many years ago. I first thing I ever cut was black locust, and when I when I pulled that out of the woods, it was just because I was already down. And it was just I wanted to cut something, and so I put it on the mill, and we cut up thin boards for siding, um, just to see if I could cut some siding. And then about a year later, I was building a um, puppet stage type of thing for the kids in junior church. And one of the pieces of siding, I was going to use them like shingles on this roof. And as I was messing with it, I was rubbing my hands around on it. And you could, I'll, I'll have a good piece here soon, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. But I could just hear it in the wood. It was very, it's very hard, um, and I knew that. But the, mu the the wood has a musical tone to it. Just rubbing your fingers on it more than even koa. And I had a piece of koa at the time that was the same thickness. And I was just messing with it and tapping on it, and I thought this sounds better than the koa. And so then I looked it up, and people have said that black locust is a good sounding uh, wood for guitars, only it's just not very pretty. Um, since having used it, I'll, I'll show you as we go along. There is a a thing I call um, a grain enhancement. It's a technique I use to pull out the look of the grain when you're pour filling and when you do it on black locust the grain really shows it is beautiful and you could actually finish a guitar um, with the natural look using that grain enhancement trick but on this particular one it's a hot rod series it's going to be solid black and I'm going to flame it um, and it will be wild it'll stand out it'll be different but so it won't it won't matter as far as the way it looks 
um, but it does have a very definite um, acoustic quality to it. So I, it's not just a random pick. I actually picked it because I want it. I think it's very loud. It's a very. It's better, I think, in, in volume than maple would be. So anyhow, um, that's the reason behind the black locust. All right, so the pieces we se separated um, for making possibly a neck out of, obviously they didn't work. And so I've got these three different pieces that we cut off the mill. And what I've done is I've taken and drawn out just a big enough piece. I don't know if you can see it in the video, but I've, I've got a two by four really I laid on here just to mark it out. And then I'm gonna cut this out with the bandsaw, just this little section. And then these three pieces will be glued together and we'll get a three piece neck. I changed the blade on this thing and it made a great difference. It's wonderful. I was going to work on trying to save this, get this curl in the look of it, but I'm not going to because I keep forgetting it pretty well all goes black. Give me that two by, or give me one of those, one. I am going to do it. Go ahead and, all right, I don't know if you can see this in here. There is lines, little wavy looking things that go right across the grain going this way. And, and I've learned to look for it when it's rough sawn. But that's curl. That's like flamed maple or any, this is not maple, this is um, black locust. And I, I almost want to not worry about it. But I'm thinking what I'm going to do. And I like these kind of builds because what I can do is change them as they go, because I'm the one building it. I've got certain parameters that I have to follow to make it a um, hot rod series, uh, F holes and sound forward hole and things like that. But uh, as far as color goes, I get to play with it. What I think I was, I was gonna do is solid black, but what I think I'm gonna do is make it um, a little bit transparent so you can see some of this curl in the neck when we do this. And I'll try to 
make it so that we get to keep some of that curl and it'll show up in the neck. So that's a uh, just a think something that's inspired me by the wood. I didn't know you could find flame in black locust. So I've got these three pieces, and what I'm going to do is, we're getting ready to dry them, but I want to mark them, and I want to lay them out so that uh, I know exactly how they're supposed to go. This one has the flame towards the end. I want to see that a little bit in the heel. This one doesn't really have the flame in it. It's going to be my middle board, and then this one also does. The other thing I want to do is, if you see the grain in this piece here, it, it arches up here, and I've got this one turned so that it it kind of, uh, there, it'll arch down. And then on this one, same thing, it'll arch down. And so what I'm doing is I'm kind of changing the directions of the grain so that they're sh they kind of strengthen one another. They go different directions. And it makes does make for a very strong neck. And that's definitely what we need on a uh, square neck resonator. All right, so I'm going to mark these. And then we'll glue it like this. The other thing I gotta do is I gotta make sure that this is gonna be wide enough uh, to make after I plane it down and stuff. And I think this one board is a little narrow. I might have to check this. Um, but I have to at least get two and a quarter. Right now, we are two and three eighths. Um, so it's kind of close. This, this middle board makes me worry. You might have to find a different board here to check that. All right, this is wet, but um, I want. I thought maybe it showed the curl that's in this just a little bit in the color. Um, so this is not exactly what it would look like once you put the the finish on it, but the finish definitely darkens it. So here's here's a little bit, and this isn't dried either, so it's never been dried. Um, and when you got kids. I don't know why, but I found my I found this board, um, not with all the other boards, but back by the swimming pool, and so, but you can see the curl that's in it, and that's kind of what I'm wanting to say. That's why I'm thinking I'll put a lighter color black. But I had to go find my, my third uh, piece for this. I'm going to go ahead and replace this one. Uh, it it cut funny on the mill, and so it didn't stay consistent, nor was it really thick enough. So uh, this one's going to work just perfect. All right, so this is the three pieces that will end up being the neck, and I've got them spaced, clamped, and we're going to stick them in that kiln and get them dried up. And I'm still trying to get it so you can see that that curl. You can see it a little bit more. Um, should be really neat on the end of there. All right, just do a little prep of some braces, and we'll be done for this week. Here is roughed out, got some of it cleaned up to do, um, top brace, and this is a finished tail block, and I say finished as far as got the shape to it, there's a little bit of arch right there on that for the very end of the, the guitar, it'll go down here, that'll be the, for the bottom, and this is not the block we'll be using, but I was just going to show you, I get the, I usually get the neck block out of uh, what's left from when I cut the neck out and so it'll be locust but it'll go up here on this end and this part will be glued to the top of the um, guitar and then we'll cut the hole out uh, right before we glue the back on but this is um, this will be our tail block this is a finished one for one of my shallow bodies this is going to be our, our neck block and our tail block I always use this um, walnut I've got some that was cut 50 years ago or more and uh, in fact very close to here an old um, farmer cut it was gonna make shelves out of it and didn't and it's got a really pretty just a chocolate dark color to it I know it's very dried and so what I do is I, I plant it down thin I cut it in half and I glue them see the grains going this direction and on this side it's going up and down 
So when we put it on the tail block, it is, it prevents when your, your sides come together, it can't crack along here because of the back. And then it can't crack with the grain of your sides because it, this is going across it. So it just strengthens it. Then it's not super thick. I don't like to make anything super thick or bulky. Um, so that's, that's somewhat the preparation for that so far. All right, well, thanks for joining us this week. And join us next week for um, just the next step in putting the guitar together. I think we'll be putting the top together and possibly maybe gluing the neck together. Uh, if you're enjoying the video, make sure you subscribe below.